everybody welcome back to my channel today we're going to work on something really fun just this whimsical collage and here he is just a cat with a bow tie and he's got a spacesuit on we've got some um, ancient Egyptian hieroglyphics here our text totally epic quest his little hat has um, well on his head he has a nest full of bird eggs and then we have a little picture frame here with a wasp nest and the wasp and then his hands lobster claw and then there's a hand here holding a it looks like a artificial heart so let's get started so this is my layout and the background here is a piece of cardstock that I have done some, let me move this out of the way. So this was one of my uh, faux eco dyed papers. And I'm not too happy with this one, so I'm just going to repurpose it for this project. And I want a dark background, so we'll get started with that. So I have my jelly plate here and I'm going to pull in some colors that are in the collage which would be you know dark. We've got some blue here. We've got the blue. We've got the red. So let's see. I guess I will start with the black. If I can get it open. And I do apologize for the glare. I just can't seem to get this glare situation figured out, but I think it's unavoidable as, um, you know, it's, it's not natural lighting and I don't really have a room to use right now for the natural light. This is um, some pewter. This is Blick Matte Acrylic in pewter and I just want like some of this has some nice metallic to it. And then we've got some of this navy blue. I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of that, not so much. And a spot of red here and there. So these are all just acrylic paints. And we'll just see what we come up with. I just want something dark right now. So we'll go ahead and just roll that paint on. And I've got some leftover paint underneath from a previous jelly printing session and also some pieces of jute twine that I've used for pattern. Alright, I'm liking this color, this nice dark color. And just clean my brayer off of here so that's what it's going to look like um and then I want to stamp in some texture so let's do get into my I think I might do this this is kind of um I don't know what this is it's sort of a little dot random dot texture and I'm gonna just go ahead kind of clean it off as I stamp around it so I'm just adding this dot texture to the dark background and I'm just each time I stamp the jelly plate, I am also stamping on a scrap piece of paper just to clean off the extra bits of paint here. So that's going to give it some texture. Maybe kind of like a nice sort of starry pattern or galaxy kind of thing. We'll see what we'll see what happens. All right now I'm gonna let this completely dry because I'm gonna like create 
a lighter layer over top and then when this is dry then it will pull up this dry paint we'll see how it works so let me let this dry completely and I will be back okay so, um, about 30 minutes and several puff corns later I am back and this looks fairly dry yeah it feels really dry so now we can put um, the white layer on top and I always just use my fingers I don't know why I guess I feel it's neater that way put a nice white layer That's enough. And I will set my paper on top. Just let this sit for a little bit. And I'm hoping that this will bring up the dark layer underneath and get sort of a grungy look so I'm pressing down pretty firmly and get all the corners all the edges I think this is the 12 by 14 jelly plate this is a little bit bigger size piece of cardstock. It's bigger than the eight and a half by 11. I'm not sure what size this is actually. I needed a bigger piece to um, fit all of my, all of this on here. Um, these, this and I believe this and I think this one, this piece as well, came from a Miss 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 Smithsonian magazine. So I really like the Smithsonian magazines because they have a lot of um, vintage images on them. It's really cool. So I have several different pieces cut out from different Smithsonian magazines that um, I get from work. We have a lot of um, people that turn in magazines and uh, they give them away for free for patients to look at. Alright, so make sure we got all of that covered and cross our fingers. I'm sure it won't look terrible but I'm hoping that it brings up, oh yeah. Let's get this edge. Let's see if I can just brayer this out. Yeah, that looks cool. There's a lot of um, the old paint coming up from the last jelly print session that I did. Got some, um, quite a bit of olive greens here and some yellows. That looks cool. All right. And then I've got some veining in here from um, pieces of the jute. That looks really neat. And it kind of looks galaxy-like. 
Here's some of that red. I've got pieces of the jute coming off. You can see some of the texture from the um, stamp that I used. All right, so we'll let that dry a little bit and then I will arrange my collage pieces again and I'll be back. Okay, so I've got um, some, of it, some of him already glued down. So there's the background, which is really cool. You can't see the metallic in there from the pewter, but it's there. So it gives it like a really cool galaxy look. There's a lot of crackling looks in here. Just a lot of stuff going on. Looks really cool. So we've got our um, wasp in here inside this frame. We've got the Egyptian hieroglyphics here, and of course the um, spacesuit. It's actually Armstrong's spacesuit. <laughs> and we have our lobster claw here, and our hand already glued on, looking really cute. And now I'm going to put the cat's head here. And what I'm using to glue it on is this um, Elmer's Craft Bond. This is acid-free, photo-safe, so I think what I'm going to do... And I have a piece of glass here over top of my um, cutting mat, so I can just easily clean off this glass when I'm finished. I'm going to just um, glue put glue everywhere except for this um, this ear here because I'm gonna have to lift that ear up to stick the um, the uh, the nest on all right so there's that I'm just gonna burnish it down with like just have a hand towel kitchen towel here that I'm just gonna smooth that out with And then we've got our nest, which I'm going to try not to get glue in that little slit there that I have cut out for the cat's ear. I think the nest I got from the bird, Birds and Blooms, this does look like a Birds and Blooms magazine. But definitely, if you're into like vintage things, um, oh, you have to check out the Smithsonian magazine. All right, let's see if I can get his ear through there now. At least this is a little tricky because now it is sticky. Okay, we got his ear through. Like a little hat, it's so cute. Weird, but cute at the same time. <laughs> and let's get that ear glued down. And go ahead and burnish that down, smooth it out. All right. And the only thing I've got left is the bow tie. I'll have to cut this off. Let's go ahead and put the bow tie on. My fingers are getting awfully sticky. I have a pack of wipes somewhere, but I can't find it. The bow tie is so cute. Put it right there. And then my text. I'm not really sure where to put my text. I had it originally right here. Totally epic quest. Yeah, I like it right there. I could put it right there. I think it looks fine right where I had it. So let's just you got to be really careful too because these magazine papers are really thin so these rip easily. 
I don't know, right here, right. I'll put it, I don't know. I don't know, I don't, right here. And then the T, this big T here. Okay, so let's burnish that down. All right, so we're done with all of our elements. And again, sorry for the glare, but look at, look at him. Look at him, he's so cute. All right, so this is kind of the style, sort of like Lori Marie Jenkins would do, if you guys are familiar with her work. She's a mixed media artist, and she does a lot of um, altered books with collage inside of them. Um, what she does is she brings out the collage pieces with some stabilo, uh, out, you know, outlines it with some dark stabilo. I do not have that, so I'm going to use this charcoal pencil. And we'll see how that works out. And I need to sharpen it. Whoops. Let's see. Let's sharpen it too much here. And we'll see what it looks like. This should be close enough. The stabilo is dark and it smudges. I'm not sure how well this is working over this acrylic, but yeah, you can kind of see that. You can kind of see that working. I'm gonna have to invest in some Stabilo if I continue doing these collages. I don't have that on my list to do though. Um, what I'm doing, I've been spending quite a bit of time making some stencils for my Cricut and I'm going to be um, doing some journal pages or actually journal covers with the um, stencils that I've made so you definitely want to subscribe and check back for that coming up because I have right now I have completed a an owl stencil. I also have a bonsai tree and I have um, a giraffe so far. So I'm going to continue making stencils and incorporating them with the jelly print and uh, I will be um, showing you what I do with those and I may if you guys like them, I may make them available for download um, at some point. I think they look pretty cool. We'll see. We'll see how they turn out. So I'm gonna just continue on with this um, outlining and um, adding depth to the um, collage pieces with this charcoal, and I will return to show you what it looks like. And I may add some white as well. I have a um, Oh, here's my stump here, my blending stump. I should probably use that. Yeah, I can blend that charcoal in just like that. Cool. All right, so I will return when I am completed. Well, when this is completed. All right. I shall return. Okay, so really quickly, the um, the charcoal pencil works great around the outside over the acrylic. Well, not great, but good enough um, to make the shading right here on the outside of the collage. But I try to use it um, over the magazine pages itself to kind of put some shading around um, the tie and stuff. And that was not working well at all because there's no grip on the magazine pages so I should have known 
So what I am using instead is um, a, just an ink pen. This is just a black ink pen. And while it is still wet when you first put it down, I'm just taking my um, finger, so going around the edges, and this is still fairly wet when it goes down. And I can take my finger or this um, hand towel and kind of smear it and rub it in to create that shading. So, and then in the darker areas, so I want the cat's head to stand out, I am using the Sakura um, Jelly Roll pen, which is in white, and this works great as well over the magazine pages. And this also goes on fairly wet, so you can um, knock that brightness back if you want to. I kind of like it really bright right here. It stays wet for a little bit, for a few seconds, and you can kind of tap that down if you'd like so that it's not so bright. So that kind of helps the cute little cat face stand out. So I'm going to continue with it and I will be back again, probably add some whiskers and stuff and show you what I came up with. Okay guys, here he is. Um, I would rec definitely recommend um, the Stabilo. I've never used it before, but um, from what I've seen, it will smudge much better um, than what I was doing with the magazine or with the uh, charcoal and these magazine pages definitely not working. So I did have to improvise. So um, I you find that I do have to improvise quite a bit because I don't have what I need, but um, it does work. It's just a little bit harder to do, I think. So this is my white Sakura Jelly Roll pen that I've used to outline um, the cat's face so that it stands out more. I've also added some whiskers here, um, some highlights around the outside edge of the, um, the suit. Um, I also added a little bit of white highlight uh, to the letters here, the Totally Epic Quest and also a little bit around here um, and the tie and here I think is a little bit too too clean too bright so I'm just improvising again my fingers are dirty but it's fun is this is fun stuff guys have fun with what you do and don't worry about it being perfect you this is the point just having fun so I'm just gonna grunge this up a little bit so this is my zebra pen here and while it is still wet I'm just putting some marks here and I'm just smearing some black across here just to um, not have this so like perfectly clean but kind of have it match the rest of the the um, the composition here and uh, knock it back a little bit so that it's not so bright and stand doesn't stand out and I use my fingers a lot in my artwork so oh I did do the same thing like around the letters here. I didn't quite glue that down. I didn't get a lot enough glue on some of the pieces, but that's okay. You can see some of it coming up, so I'll have to figure out how to fix that. Maybe put a somehow kind of put some glue underneath there. But um there it is, and I'm really happy with it. The background I really love. And I think it, he is super cute. If I would have had some cat legs to stick out here, I might have done that instead. But then again, it kind of goes with this whole strange kind of composition going on. Yeah, that's too bright, so I'll just knock that back as well with some marks. 
And I think I'll call this done. And I hope that you guys liked this video. And if you haven't subscribed, go ahead and subscribe our, and uh, hit the notification icon so that you are notified when new videos come up. I try to at least get one new video up a week. I do have a thrift haul coming up. And like I said, I've got some really cool stencils that I've made that I'm going to use for some journals or some some artwork and this is I'm really happy with this so I hope you guys like it give it a thumbs up and I will see you again next time thank you again for watching bye bye guys